Well, hello, travelers. Welcome to Reach the World. For over 20 years, Reach the World has used virtual exchange to inspire youth to become curious, confident, and compassionate global citizens. My name is Tim, and I'm glad you're joining us for today's Meet the World live stream event. The Meet the World pro uh, program builds positive personal connections between students in the US and global cultures, all through direct interactions with real people who are excited to share their countries and cultures with you. For a complete listing of upcoming Meet the World live stream events, you can always visit at home reachtheworld.org. Today, we are going to be traveling to Nigeria with Fulbright Foreign Language Teaching Assistant, Obiolua Taiwo, and he's going to do a better job of pronouncing his name when I'm finished here. I apologize, apologize up front. Uh, Obiolua is from Ibadan, Nigeria, and he's currently teaching the Yoruba language at Fayetteville State University in Fayetteville, North Carolina. He's teaching remotely this year as part of the Fulbright program. And he's joining us today from Nigeria to tell us more about his home country and culture. I'm very, very excited to hear more. But before I turn things over, I wanna welcome the teachers and students who are watching today's Meet the World live stream event. Please feel free to use the YouTube chat bar to let us know you're here, where you're joining from, and of course, to share any questions you have for our guests as we go. We'll get to as many questions as we can in the next 30 minutes. I know we're starting a few minutes late, but we will have plenty of time to get some questions in at the end today. And with that, it's time to take a journey to Nigeria. Obulua, welcome to Reach the World. All right, thank teams for that wonderful introduction. Anyway, I will still try to <laughs> readjust in some pronunciation. Once again, my name is Okpe Olua Taiwo, and I'm from Nigeria. Presently, I'm teaching remotely uh, due to the COVID-19 restriction. I was unable to travel down to the US. So I'll be telling you more about my country, Nigeria. So first of all, I would like to start with myself. You can see my costume. You can see Nigeria. That is our flag, green, white, green. Yeah. It shows that we, I am from Nigeria. Uh, I, and I said I would like to introduce myself so that you have a better of understanding. Well, because Nigeria is a great nation. We have about 500 languages and ethnic groups in Nigeria. So imagine I'm representing the interests of over 200 million Nigeria. So, all right, I'm from Ibadan, Nigeria. Ibadan is the largest city in Nigeria and not only in Nigeria, in the West Africa. So Ibadan is a large city throughout the Africa is one of the record well-known city in Africa. So that's where I am from. So imagine that you will listen and have the opportunity to explore so many things about Nigeria. And for me to have the antecedent, the background of Ibadan, meaning uh, I'm loaded today to give you lots of information about Nigeria as a whole. I will be sharing my screen so you be able to. All right. Can you see my screen? Uh, see, not is my not, screen not home? yet. Um, I can see you still. Um, not yet with the screen share. Okay. You need to make me also share my screen. You need to make me the host to share my screen. Right. Second. Sorry for that. As team is trying to fix that for me to be able to share my screen. Uh, let me continue by telling you more about Ibadan City. Uh, Ibadan is the largest city, as I earlier said. And if you come to Nigeria, Ibadan happens to be the host of the first university in Nigeria. So when you get to Nigeria and you ask where is the first university located, that's my hometown in Ibadan. We also have the first uh, television station 
that's also in Ibadan city. So meaning, the meaning Ibadan also uh, remarkable and wonderful landmark. So when we are talking about Nigeria, we need to talk about Ibadan because there are some ancient landmarks in Ibadan, Nigeria. And not only Ibadan, Nigeria, we also have some other important places. All right. So we also have people can explore. All right, let me share my screen you now. All right, sorry for that. All right, Ted, Tim, can you see my screen? Um, no, I cannot see your screen yet. Um, I think you are. Do you have the, the green arrow in the bottom, right in the middle? There's okay. at the bottom, there's the, the green arrow that's a share screen. Okay, yeah, I, I, I have it now. Yeah. I have it now. There we go. Okay, what about that? Okay, now. So I welcome you. So let me just go quickly because of our time to the main uh, presentation. So here we go. I would like to start with the map of Nigeria on the globe. So you can see Nigeria is located in the heartbeat of Africa. You can see the position of Nigeria. This is a map of Africa and this is the globe world entirely, world entirely. So after you are able to look Africa, you can see the position of Nigeria is at the heartbeat, meaning Nigeria is very German, is very, very important when we talk about Africa. We are referred to as the giant of Africa because of the economy and some other factors. And Nigeria happens to be one of the 56 countries in Africa. Yeah, one of the 56 countries in Africa. And also, Nigeria is the 33rd largest country in the whole world. So, and it covers the land mass of 923,768 kilometers. So, if you explore the, <laughs> the world history, you realize that Nigeria happens to be the seventh largest population when it comes to people that lives in the country. Nigeria is the largest population with seventh position after the US, the China, the Indonesia and other countries of the world. Okay. And when it comes to Africa, Nigeria is the most populated country. And why is it we you know when I started I said we are located in the heartbeat of Africa. So Nigeria welcomes other foreigners both Africans and other people out of, uh, or in other different parts of the world. So they dwell in Nigeria peacefully and they are doing great because they know what it means to live in Nigeria. All right, uh, my next slide is now focused on Nigeria as a country. Don't forget I've talked about tracing Nigeria on the map of Africa now we are in Nigeria. The name Nigeria is given by Flora Shaw, and that was in the year 1897. 1897, Flora Shaw happens to be the wife to Lord Frederick Lugard, who was the uh, prime governor of, of Nigeria then, yeah. So, but in 1914, there was an amalgamation between the southern 
protectorate and the northern protectorate. So they merge these two. Uh, I can even say they, they merge the two countries together there because the southern have their own plan. Likewise, the northern protectorate had a own plan. So, but in 1914, these two uh, protectorates were made together to become Nigeria. And don't forget, Nigeria has a lot of ethnic groups, languages, even before the amalgamation. So, merging it together in 1914 is like bringing lots of people, lot of languages, lot of ethnics, and people with various diversities, bringing them together to be one imagine so when nigeria is preaching tolerance when we are talking about unity we really know what we are saying because nigeria is a large country yeah? it's concerned lots of people with different ideas with different backgrounds i like that all right but in 1960 that's 60 years ago nigeria gained our independence from the uh british colony and we spend our currency is Naira and Kobo. I'm going to show you the picture of some of our currency. In Nigeria, we have 36 states, and the state capital is located at the federal capital territory. That's located at Abuja. We have some major cities like Lagos, where I reside. Abuja, that's the FCT. Port Accord, Ibadan, my Asian city where I come from. Benin, Zaria, Abba, Abba is known with the market. So all these are ancient landmarks and well-known places in Nigeria. We also have religions. Nigeria is tolerant when it comes to religion. If you've been following the uh, trend, you realize that some uh, days ago, we have some incidents when it comes to Boko Haram issues here in Nigeria, but we were able to or be overcoming some of these challenges because of the tolerance and the unity. Okay, so we have Christian, we have Muslim, and African tradition in our religion. And don't forget, I said we have over 500 languages. Imagine just in one country, over five, we are still counting, over 500 languages and ethnic groups. But the major three are Yoruba, the Hausa, and the Igbo. I come from the Yoruba. Uh, tribe and we also have other tribes and groups like the T, the Hedo, the Kanuri, the Niger Delta, the Ijo, Evi, Kigala, Ibira. So many, so many of them. And this is the map of Nigeria showing the 36 states we have here in Nigeria. All right, coming to uh, the government, we are operating a civil. Lian government since 1999. So Nigeria is operating a uh, civilian government. And we have three tiers of government, the judiciary, the legislature, and the executive. Our president is Muhammadu Buhari. He took office on May 29, 2015 as the 15th president. He is a Fulani man and he is from Daura. Daura is a place in Castina State. The vice president is Professor Yemi Osibajo. He's a lawyer by profession. He happens to be from my tribe, Yoruba, and he hails from Lagos State, Nigeria. A coat of arm, you can see this is a picture of uh, our president and the vice president. And these are some of the uh, coat of arm. This is a coat of arms symbolizing our loves and passion as, Niger as in Nigeria. And this is the color of our flag. And each of these color has its meaning. It has its meaning. Okay, Nigeria is now divided into six geopolitical, I mean, geopolitical zones. We have the northwest. When I talk about the geopolitical zone, you know, don't forget we have merged so many people, so many languages together to be one. So in the process of still trying to be one, so you have geopolitical zone. Now we have six major geopolitical zones in Nigeria. The first is the Northwest, which contains six states. We have the Bauchi, Borno, Taraba, Adama, Gombe, and Yobe. The second is the Northeast, which also has seven states. We have the North Central, we have the Southeast, 
we have the south south and we have the southwest i fall under the southwest or your yeah so each of these zone as its language its culture something that uh, brings them together you know you know when we look around for what binds people together that's what led to the these categories of having geopolitical zone people with the, the same idea with related visions and profession so we come out with six geopolitical zones in nigeria and these are pictures of our currency you know before the arrival of these major eight uh, currencies we spent cobalt we spent shillings and different uh, denominations of money but majorly as at present we have these eight we have five naira and some of these uh currencies carry the pictures of some of our nationalists both heroes and heroes some of them are no longer but before they die they have contributed immensely towards the growth of Nigeria. We have Tafawa Balewa, the first prime minister. We have Alvan Ikoku on Tenaira. We have General Monsala Muhammad. We have the Better Life. Each the Better Life means is 50 Naira, representing the three major zones, the Yoruba, the Awusa, the Ipo. We also call it Wasobia. So if you happen to be in Nigeria and one of these uh, currency falls in your head you should value them and know what they stand for so and i've arranged them hierarchically as their preference this is 100 naira we have the upper upper family we have uh a model bill on 200 naira we have 500 naira and the highest denomination for now is a thousand one thousand naira so the two past cbn gov the central bank of nigeria governor of picture uh, is on one thousand naira all right after i've explained that nigeria <laughs> you know i said this we have met so many people so i don't even know where to start should i tell you about our tourist centers there are so many so many we have a dressing code you know our culture you can see me my regalia this is a typical yoruba man can see my cap so and we have this that varies according to our tribes and culture all right we have our food we have our tribal map we have nationalists we have festivals we have built you know, a lot of things but i will try to uh be brief so that some of you you have the idea and a picture of how and what nigeria looks like okay this is myself you can see me this is the clothes I'm putting on. Uh, this is a picture I took in 2018 during uh, a festival. It's celebrating the children. They were making, marking and celebrating uh, culture week. Yes, this is a school in Nigeria, great school, Lagos, Nigeria. I can see those little kids. We catch them young so that they know what it means to be in Nigeria. So hardly will you find a Nigeria that won't be able to tell you history and what it means to be in nigeria so this is my you can see myself because this is one of our actors in nigeria femi adebayo so we are celebrating uh culture culture week then call this culture week so from there we move on to different style different attires that shows our uh, people from their tribe this is a yoruba attire you can see them these children are representing yoruba and another common cloth among the yoruba people is agbada agbada is a very big regalia okay we have the Igbo costume they have their own isiagu you know this is a special cloth the picture depicted on it is the lion's head showing how brave they are showing how strong i'm very sure none of you can see a lion and say hi you were wrong so the Igbo people shows that they are brave, they are active, and they are showing that they are proud. These are presidents putting on the Igbo, Igbo costume. All right. We also have the Tig people. They usually put on white and black cloth. We have the Efik. These, these, these people, they are from Cross River State in Nigeria. Don't forget, I said we have 36 states in Nigeria. So this is just representing one out of those states so cross river 
is another place to be in Nigeria. All right. Now I will be discussing some of our tourist centers. The first is Zuma Rock. Zuma Rock is, is 2,379 feet tall above the surface of the earth. You can see. And it's located along uh, Abuja. If you are going to the federal capital, you will surely come across this big rock. And do you know one funny thing about Zuma Rock? If you look at this picture, it depicts a picture of a, a, a human being facial uh, facial expression. It's as if the face of a, a, the face of a man is imprint on the rock, and this is natural. So if you move closer, I, I'll try to trace it out here. So it looks if you look very close to this Zuma rock, it will look as if a human being is looking, it's watching as people that are moving in and moving out. So people residing around Abuja believe that this is one Haitian man that we cannot join, joke with in Nigeria. Okay, that's Zuma rock. We also have another uh, rock. Below, can, I, can I interrupt for just a second? Sorry, sorry to interrupt, okay. but can you okay. uh, make your, can you make your slide full so we can see the pictures a little bit larger? Um, maybe okay. using the, the view or the presentation tool. Um, yeah, like um, if you go up to view at the top. Okay, what about this? Should be. Um, yeah, that's, that's better. Thank you. All right, okay. You're welcome. So this is another ancient rock. It's located uh, around Ogun State, Nigeria. This is Olumo Rock. Olumoro. This place serves as a refuge for people in the 19th century. Whenever there was war, they quickly run towards this rock and hid themselves. So that makes me to remember a song. It's a rock of ages cleft for me. So it's a hiding place for the enemies. So the enemies won't be able to see them once they hid themselves under this rock. This is located at Ogun State, Nigeria. Oh, this is Sogidi Lake. You won't believe the story behind this lake. Uh, I'll quickly try to tell you why, well, because of our time. The meaning, Sogidi, is from the Yoruba sent. They say a Sogidi, meaning good fruits. You know, the story behind this lake happens to be in, the, uh, in I think, 16th century. Yeah, in 16th century, you know, we have some uh, dwellers from Ileife. Ileife is a uh, story, is a story is a place where all Yoruba people are from. So after they left Ileife, they got to this place along Oyo, you know, then we have Oyo Empire before they bring, we, we, we were merged together. So Sogidi River happens to be a place. So after the hunters were searching for water, for place to reside, they saw some baboons, some monkeys jumping from one tree to another. So they were able to trace down those monkeys to where they were drinking this water and say, wow, so this is a lake. That means we can reside around this place since we have water to be drinking. And imagine when they bring out the water to drink, they realize that there are some strange creatures inside this water. They saw a mermaid. Huh. Do you think we can drink this water? And the mermaid assured them that no. You are free. We can you can stay. You can drink the water. He said, and he said, are you sure we can drink this water? He said, you can drink the water. And as they are moving around the water, they saw different fruits. When they ate the fruit, they were, well, this fruit is good. So the meaning of good in Yoruba is giddy. So from that good fruit, they now coined the name. A so giddy, so giddy. And from there, they started calling this water so giddy, so giddy, so giddy, meaning from this place, we were able to find a good fruit to eat apart from drinking the water. So the water is still there for many centuries, never dry off. People drinking it never complain of typhoid or cholera because if you get to our way, this is their source of water till tomorrow. Yeah. You can see 1750. I think I need to be fast because of my time. 
<laughs> All right, this is another major celebration in Nigeria. It's called Agugu Fishing Festival. This is normally, uh, it happens around KP State. Every four days, they have a special day. And what is meant, what is this meant for? They, it's like a competition. Once they say, all your marks set, go. People from various parts of the country will come to compete. And the person that can catch the biggest fish will be the winner. We imagine the winner. You can see they were fishing. And the, the after maybe like an hour, they we just blow the whistle. Oh, it's over. The game is over. Now you bring out your fish. And the, the biggest fish that was caught, the first person happens to be this. in this game. I'm very sure if they happens to come to Nigeria. All right, this is another important landmark we have here in Jesha. This is where warm water and cold water, you know, they, there is a point where they meet. Warm water is flowing in one side and cold water in another side. And they happen to meet. So we also did this is uh, Idorehi, another hill in Nigeria. So you can see this is my picture when I travel to Ikogosi. You know, to feel, is it true in my country, warm and cold water, the mate? Wow, so I was there. So this is my picture. All right, so we have food, different food from yam. Just from yam, we can pan yam for you. I can bet it to enjoy this meal. You can take it with I mean, vegetable soup. This is porridge. This is a goosey soup. You can take it with, with yam. Wow, I, I, I'm, I, I'm feeling like tasting the food <laughs> now. Okay, this is another food. This is corn. We use it to prepare uh, popcorn. We also have cassava. From cassava, we have amala. Amala is a typical Yoruba man food. So they like to eat amala. Okay, and don't forget, when I started, I said Nigeria is loaded with different languages and ethnic groups. We have more than 500. So and out of that 500, uh, I'm able to come out with, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six, just to give you a sample. So I'll start with the Yoruba language. When Yoruba, Yoruba people say, hello, that means they are saying, hello. If you can say that, say it wherever you are. Hello, meaning, hello. Hello, Tim, can you try that? Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, meaning, Hello, and if you want to welcome someone, you say a cabo or a quabo. That is Yoruba for you. Another language is the Awusa. Don't forget, I said the major tribe is Yoruba, Awusa, and Igbo. If it is Awusa, they say Sano. That means they are saying hello, Sano. And Nago, they means thank you in Awusa language. Another language is Igbo language. Welcome is no, no. And Kedu, how are you? Kedu, you know. We have so many of these languages. You can depends on the area where you want to explore. And before I round, I would like to sing a national anthem. You know, it gives us strength. It gives us sense of belonging that we are proud of our country, Nigeria. Whenever we send our players to play football with other nations of the world, they must sing this national. So I want to sing the first stanza because of our time. Arise, O oh, compatriots, Nigeria's call obey to serve our fatherland with love and strength and faith. The labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain. To serve with heart and might, one nation but in freedom, peace and unity. Wow, so that's the first answer. The second stanza is a song of prayer for our nation, Nigeria. So I don't know if I still have more time to talk more or you have questions so that we'll be able to answer your questions before we call it a day. 
to you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Abilua, why don't you come out of screen share and we'll get a, a nice big picture of you and I can pass along a couple of questions that we can answer before we end for today. All right, okay. Might, might be able to help you with that. Let's see here, there we go. Well, thank you so much for giving us that wonderful overview of Nigeria. The fact that really sticks with me from your presentation is 500 languages. That's a lot of languages. Over. <laughs> Over 500 languages. How many of those, how many languages do you speak? For me, I speak uh english yoruba and i speak another little of Hausa, little of Hausa, little of Hausa. i can okay. speak just let's say two out of so many okay. <laughs> you were talking you showed a great map of nigeria that showed where where different um groups and cultures live throughout the country uh i wonder how easy it is to or how often um people from one region go and participate in the celebrations and customs of other regions? Or are the um, different um, customs really just celebrated by certain groups? That's why I said, when in 1914, when all these uh, protectorates were met together, you know, all of them have their own specialty. They have their own languages, they have their own a celebration and in order to keep that spirit moving that's why we have geopolitical zone so people that are very close to themselves they can celebrate their whole life that's why we have six geopolitical zone so out of each geopolitical zone we also have different you know what each of them celebrates their own uh festivals their own uh culture their own food for me in my home state we celebrate uh, a gugu, a gugu is like a masquerade, and we also have some fruit. Is we have uh, ish, the, the yam that I show you is a festival. We have Oshun Oshogbo festival. Osho Oshogbo festival is celebrated around Osho State, where you know the gods of the water. So we have different uh, areas according to their own culture. They celebrate it. So, but I've talked about the major one in Nigeria. Okay, I think you so mentioned that means it. we can't explore. We can't explore all. So I just mentioned a few of them. I I realized as you were speaking what a big task it is to ask you to introduce this entire country that has so much uh, diversity and, and variety in it. Uh, it's a, it's a big task. You did a good job of of giving us an overview. Um, my question for you, and I think you mentioned this while you were speaking, uh, is that you are in Lagos right now? Yeah, yeah, uh, what, I'm in Lagos, what, Nigeria. What is your everyday life like in Lagos? Like, what on an average day, what do you do from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep, generally? Well... I want to say for you, Lagos is a very busy, one of the busiest places in Nigeria. Imagine two, three, even in the night, people are still moving because it's like a center of business. And you know, for me here in Lagos, is is always wonderful. As I like, it's always busy. I see people engaging in different things, their business, those that are traders, those that are you know, a lot of activities. It's a busy day always. This day always. So Lagos is always busy. And for me, you know, after going to my work, I return and at times you need to struggle to board. <laughs> if you don't have your personal car, you need to, you know, struggle because we have lots of people here in Lagos that want to move from one place and you need to cover up the distance within a very limited time. So everybody needs to be fast and active. So it's a very busy day always here in Lagos. Okay, very good. Uh, I know that you are teaching remotely um, at, in, at uh, Fayetteville in, um, in North Carolina. I wonder if you could tell us um, what that experience has been like for you teaching um, your Yoruba language uh, to US students. 
Well, thank you for that uh, question. Uh, sincerely, your Yoruba language has been interesting. You know, I would have loved to show you a slide of some uh, Americans putting on something like this regalia. And there was a time I think I I met some people, they, come, they came from the US that's interested in learning Yoruba. So for me to be teaching online, wow. Apart from the fact that I'm able to reach out to so many students at a time, I'm able to, you know, learn how to use technology to present my world, you know, to let me know what is happening in my zone with a very easy way using technology. Some of my students that have here been State University have been, so some of them even want to come down to Nigeria and they are praying this COVID-19 so that we're able to come and show them pictures, deal with them physically so that we can learn more. So it has been wonderful. It has been wonderful. And, you know, the online has been another resource for me to explore and to be effective in teaching Yoruba language. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm very glad to hear that. And I know that um, learning more about Nigeria, just this beginning taste of all the amazing things you can explore in Nigeria, uh, will get Reach the World students interested, maybe exploring one or more of the individual cultures you mentioned uh, in your fantastic presentation. And then hopefully someday uh, our, our students will come and, and visit you too. Uh, to see Nigeria and experience Nigeria for themselves. So I really want to thank you so much for sharing your time and your knowledge and your experiences with us today. This has been a lot of fun. I also want to thank our entire live stream audience for going on this journey with us. Reach the World will be hosting many more Meet the World live stream events over the coming months, and you're always invited to virtually travel the world with us. You can visit at home.reachtheworld.org for more information until then. And thank you so much. We will see you all next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.